I declare that the 523rd Convocation of McMaster University for the conferring of degrees is now in session. Please be seated. Good afternoon. I am David Wilkinson, Provost and Vice President Academic of the University. This afternoon, I have the great pleasure of acting as your Master of Ceremonies and welcoming all of you to Convocation. Before we start our formal program, may I first ask everyone in the hall to switch off any electronic device that may ring or beep during the ceremony. I would now like to call upon our Chancellor, Dr. Suzanne Labarge, to make her own welcoming remarks. Welcome honored guests, staff, faculty, family, friends, and most important, graduates. This is an exciting day for all of you who are graduating today, as well as for all those people who have supported you and stood behind you, and in many cases, have had a key role in your being here today. You've achieved a great deal to get here, and you should all be very proud of your success and looking forward to what the future might bring. Congratulations and enjoy the ceremony. I would now like to introduce Dr. Patrick Dean, President and Vice Chancellor, who will be introducing our honorary degree recipient. Chancellor Labarge, by the authority of the Senate of McMaster University, I have the honor to present Edward Calabrese. Edward Calabrese pioneered the field of hormesis, which recognizes that harm from chemicals or radioactive substances does not increase linearly with the dosage. Instead, Dr. Calabrese has proved that doses can be identified which are beneficial. He has worked with great energy and scientific rigor to illustrate the importance of hormesis in regulations, processes, and approaches related to fields such as toxicology, pharmacology, and radiation. The work produced by Dr. Calabrese and his colleagues has sparked vigorous scientific debate and, famously, a special section in the journal Science. Working with longtime collaborator Linda Baldwin, Dr. Calabrese has also created a, a database of more than 21,000 papers related to the field. Dr. Calabrese is a professor of toxicology at the University of Massachusetts Amherst School of Public Health and Health Sciences. And during his nearly four decades there, he has served the university as the graduate program director for the Environmental Health Sciences Department, as division chair for the Environmental Health Sciences Division, and as director of the Northeast Regional Environmental Public Health Center, a position he has held since 1985. Prior to joining the faculty at the University of Massachusetts Amherst, Dr. Calabrese was an assistant professor with the Department of Occupational and Environmental Medicine at the University of Illinois, the Env Environmental Research Director for the Massachusetts Public Interest Research Group, an adjunct professor with Southwest Residence College of the University of Massachusetts, and an assistant professor with North Adams State College. Dr. Calabrese has published extensively on hormesis and factors affecting susceptibility to pollutants and is the author and co or co-author of more than 750 papers in scholarly journals, as well as 26 books, including Principles of Animal Extrapolation, Nutrition and Environmental Health, 
ecogenetics, multiple chemical interaction, and air toxics and risk assessment. He is the co-editor of Hormesis, a revolution in biology, toxicology, and medicine. He has also served as the editor-in-chief of a number of respected scholarly journals, including Dose Response, Nonlinearity in Biology, Toxicology and Medicine, and Human and Ecological Risk Assessment. His editorial board service includes the journals Inhalation Toxicology, Soil and Sediment Contamination, an international journal, Human and Experimental Toxicology, Environmental Toxicology and Safety, and Biomedical and Environmental Sciences. Dr. Calabrese has been a member of the US National Academy of Sciences and NATO countries' Safe Drinking Water Committees and served on the board of scientific counselors for the Agency for Toxic Substances and Disease Registry, the ATSDR. He is also chairman of the advisory committee for Bell, the biological effects of low-level exposures. And he is director of the Northeast Regional Environmental Public Health Center at the University of Massachusetts. He was awarded the 2009 Marie Curie Prize from the International Dose Response Society for his body of work on hormesis, and he was the recipient of the International Society for Cell Communication and Signaling Springer Award in 2010. In 2012, the International CCN Society named Dr. Calabrese an honorary member. Chancellor Labarge, for Edward Calabrese's decades of scientific study, scholarly leadership and advocacy in the field of dose response, and for his contributions to the transformation of drug discovery, drug development, risk assessment, and environmental regulation, I ask that you confer upon Dr. Calabrese the degree Doctor of Science honoris causa. Edward Calabrese, by the authority of McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to confer upon you the degree of Doctor of Science Honoris Causa in McMaster University with all the rights and privileges pertaining to that degree. Thank you. Congratulations. And we will ask you to sign the roll. I would now like to invite Dr. Calabrese to deliver the convocation address. I'm greatly honored uh, and humbled to accept the honorary doctoral degree from your university. It's an honor that one never truly thinks about because it's far beyond one's normal reach. I'm here today because I'm helping to lead a revolution in the biological and biomedical sciences. It's called the dose response revolution. It's my belief that the scientific and medical communities got the dose response concept wrong many years ago concerning how drugs, chemicals, and radiation act in the low dose zone. It's the zone in which most of us live most of our lives. Throughout much of the 20th century, the belief was that the dose response was linear for agents causing cancer and a threshold for everything else. My research has seriously challenged these two views. When one challenges the scientific and medical leadership on one of their basic scientific principles, you better be on solid foundation or you may find yourself delivering pizzas to students at night <laughs> rather than correcting their papers. While I'm not here to proclaim that I have convinced the entire scientific and medical communities to my perspective, I can say that I am still correcting student papers at night while eating the pizza rather than doing the delivering. <laughs> my story <clears throat> is how do you discover and prove 
that these scientific and medical leaders made a profound error on a basic principle that has gravely affected our health and the economy. Well, for me, <clears throat> it was really entirely serendipitous, much like the discovery of the potato chip or that Rogaine can grow hair. Uh, my insights first came as an undergraduate student taking uh, a plant physiology course, of all things. Uh, in one experiment, we were to demonstrate the standard dose response for a synthetic plant growth retardant. However, instead of inhibiting the plant growth, it stimulated it. The professor asked if anyone was interested in following up on this anomalous finding. As it turns out, I was the only one. Uh, we figured out that the reason the normal experiment did not work was because the wrong dose was used. Uh, an error that I made, essentially, in making up the stock solution resulted in only one-tenth of the dose uh, being administered to the plants um, and not following the actual instructions of the professor. Um, when I did the experiment over and did it essentially the way he wanted it done in the first place, and adding in the way we actually did it, making a larger experiment, we got exactly what he said we would get at the high dose, the inhibition, but at the low dose, we saw, we saw the stimulation once again. My professor inspired me to repeat this experiment in progressively stronger studies, in fact, about 11 times, driving me a bit crazy. Um, at which point, we became convinced that the findings were very reliably reproducible. He then directed me to do additional work, really another uh, two dozen experiments that were closely re, uh, related to the hypothesis, but attempting to, to prove um, uh, with rather indirect ways, but complementary ways, um, the, um, the accuracy of the conclusions that we had drawn. When all was said and done, I knew that I had discovered that a threshold or linear response was not operating, uh, in this case, but a biphasic one, something I later learned was called hormesis. We published this research in a British botanical journal. I graduated, later uh, obtained my PhD, and became a professor and started professional life, almost forgetting this intense period of my first research experience. Nearly two decades later, the issue of uh, hormesis and biphasic dose responses became highly visible and provocative within the scientific and regulatory uh, powers proclaiming that it was wrong uh, could not be reproduced, was very trivial at best, and was a ploy to undercut environmental regulatory standards. My long, nearly forgotten undergraduate research experience emerged, telling me that I knew something that others didn't, that such biphasic dose responses could be real and reproducible. I just didn't know how general they were, uh, what their dose response characteristics and basic mechanisms were, uh, nor how broadly significant the reality could be. The past 20 years have led me down this path, a path that reconnected me to my undergraduate days. I had taken a long, marginalized biological concept, one that had never made it into the textbooks, one that was never the subject of a conference, a symposium, a seminar, or even a classroom lecture, and breathed scientific life into it. We are in the process of changing how the scientific, medical, and regula regulatory communities think and act on this topic. Such changes in thinking are happening quickly and at multiple levels within society. We are now seeing numerous medical procedures uh, that have incorporated this concept to save, improve, and extend lives. It is also affecting how the general public acts uh, as well, and as we see in new dietary recommendations such as the intermittent fast uh, fasting or the rapid adoption of the 5-2 diet and other developments based on this concept. All in all, uh, the road has not been an easy one. As many colleagues and others in the scientific community thought that those challenging the standard protocols of linearity and threshold while proposing the hormetic alternative had somehow lost their scientific past, or path. My message to you is that big things always start small like a giant oak from a tiny acorn, or from a professor's observation that his peppermint plants were acting in an odd fashion. So be curious. Try to figure out the exception to the rule. 
you may find something very important and transforming. However, exploring the ex exception rather than the rule can also be dangerous to your job health. So it helps to be correct if you go down that lonely path. <laughs> For in retrospect, I am now very grateful to my old and now deceased professor who made me replicate my experiment so many times and in, doing so many and in so many different ways so that we could have very high confidence in our conclusion. It took me nearly a professional life to appreciate his wisdom and demanding scientific standards as it undoubtedly um, preserved my professional life and helped bring me to McMaster University today. Thank you very much. On behalf of the university, I'd like to, talk, to thank Dr. Calabrese for his talk. There are a couple of things that struck me about it apart from the substance of what he's talking about and his reference to the need for curiosity is the fact that he seemed to have learned as much from his mistakes as his successes and the need for persistence is what actually in the long run carries you through. And for all of you out there and today as graduates, I think this is a message that is very important as you go through your career with the base you've gotten over the last year and I think the message is a very important one and we thank you very much. Dr. Patrick Dean will now come forward to present the graduands to our Chancellor for admission to their degrees. Will the graduands please stand? Madam Chancellor, on behalf of McMaster University Senate, I present to you these candidates in order that you may confer the appropriate degrees upon them. And I bear witness that they are worthy and suitable. May I also request that you confer the appropriate degrees in absentia upon all those candidates who have successfully completed the required course of study, but who are not present. Graduands, by my authority, and that of the McMaster University Senate, I have the great pleasure to admit those before me today and those in absentia to their individual degrees in McMaster University. With all of the rights and privileges pertaining to those degrees, my sincere congratulations to you all. Please be seated. Graduates, I now ask each of you to join me on the stage so that the Chancellor and I may welcome you into the McMaster community of scholars.
Ladies and gentlemen, so that each graduate's name may be heard, it would be appreciated if during the presentation of the graduands, you would hold your collective applause to the end of each degree category. Thank you. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Philosophy. Seja Nereus Sugiman Marangos. Amanda Louise File. Shaima Salman. Ye Zhang. John Bernard Grande. Lisa Ann Walter. Aubrey Bailey Morgan Wyatt. Amanda Sarah Fawcett. Yiming Patiguli. Peng Li Wang. Heidi Daxberger. Janina Plach. Athena Goodfellow. Paul Adrian Moore. Michelle Margaret Vine. Kathy Carke Lee. Deirdre Allison Dijon. Jing Guo. Kula Makan Kula Segaram. Morgan Elizabeth Lim. Matthew David Joseph Mercury. Anne Moore Cox. Andrew James Robert Cochran. Chelsea Peltier. Shi Gao. Mark Allen Weston. Anna Marie Antolich. Deepanita Basu. Anthony Bruce. Ayesha Gayur. Amy Elizabeth Gilgrass. Stephen James LeConte Hansen.
Francis Wing Moon Lai. Alina Lelich. Jane Mia Mandak Natividad. Adrian Petro Rebak. Megan Lynn Fascour. Daniel Taylor Case. Sarah E. Grulo. Joshua Gerald Albert Pinto. Brian Andrew Richardson. Kelly Christine Rillett. Ahad Siddiqui. Crystal Delhi Ruth Sukram. Karen Arlene Cook. Catherine Ann Pfaff. Philip Edward Charles Ashby. Tara Jill Parkin. Yuhai Sun. Matthew Ryan Williams. Michelle Lise Cadieu. Maria Cecilia D'Angelo. Rizik Sayek. Sandra Jean Thompson. Larissa Nicole Vingilis Yaremko. Caitlin Elizabeth Mills. Pavel Zvanaryov. Susan Strong. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Arts. Pearl Buhari Iwala. Amy Lynn Shanks. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science. Vaibhav Bandari. Michelle Lynn Dowling. (laughs) 
Nabila Hamid. Riza Jaffrey. Julianne Kaiser. Sujevan Mahendram. Laxman Pandey. Akshita Puri. Christopher A. De Jong. Sogol Azadjanis. Lingzi Kong. Carolyn Lenz. Hirsch Sharthia. We Zhao. Blake Joseph Helka. Catherine Elizabeth Kendra. Reham Kader. Krista Danielle Klein Gebink. Riley Patrick Murphy Mulligan. Nadine Shatila. Philip Sutak. Mohammed Rabani Beg. Therese Bernier. James David Dietrich. Katie Kimberly Dortono. Nader El Arab. Shauna Glinker. Jane Hunter. Ayad Mahmoud Melem. Sarah Souls. Grace Bellaine. Jasreen Chima. Simran Gohal. Michelle Ann Gold. Jeff Paul Graham.
Kirsty Yongard. Yasmin Elizabeth Kazemi. Janice Key. Mahir Khan. Daniel Robert Korpal. June Justina Lee. Elizabeth Ashley Limburner. Mona Mahmoud El Sayed Morsi. Danielle Ann Ondrika. Danielle Pagnan. Yashish Patel. Nung Kim Fan. Lisa Saldana. Danusha Senarathna. Azra Shivji. Jonathan Eric Gordon Taylor. Molly Joan Whalen Brown. Brooklyn Victoria Winch. Chankan Nguyen. Kotswara Ro Viranki. Amane Abdul Razak. Abdullah Saad M. Alotaibi. Debbie Banerjee. Arya Fala. Rebecca Angela Jeffrey. Karen Ann Moffat. Trishana Nayajar. John J. Riva. Ikra A. Syed. <laughs> Sophocles H. Voinescos. <laughs> Jessica Ann Marie Capaletto. Alyssa Marie Fenuta.
Kayla Fuster. Daniel Brian Letta Garcia. Mark Jacobs. Kevin Lee. Nanette Shinoda. Alexander Tran. Catherine Elizabeth Wilson. Christopher Zapalo. Bilal Abbasi. Jing Chen. Alex Chisholm. Conrad Dutch. Christmas Egbewali. Hamad Golamian Gonabadi. Ashen Luke James. Kristen Ann McDonald. Mahmoud Sharkawi. Vivek Anand Thampi. Fangzhou Yuan. Song Zhou. Bo So. Balpreet Singh Brar. Delisha Judith Arlene Rodrigo Pula. Alexandra Reiter. Benjamin Miles Scott. Jessica Sessenwein. Lauren Elizabeth Cudney. Allison Catherine Graham. Sufian Oda. Kashmala Altaf Kasim. Marissa Williams. Hodan Ali. (laughs) 
Elizabeth Catherine Ball. Bozana Beard. Christine Bottomley. Carrie Ann Maria Casey. Vanessa Elizabeth Cavallari. Diana David. Maria Cristina Ferrara. Patricia George Kosh. Delane Catherine Haas. Gloria Elaine Holder. Irina Kasminas. Stacy Ann Lim. Julie Pamela Megans. Laura Dorothy Mihidan. Joan Kilu Musau. Amy Robinson. Sherry Yan Wing. Amy Yu. Alyssa Cruzen Cobb. Corey Stan Howard. Spencer T. Manuel. Kyle Pastor. Tara Caitlin Power. Jeffrey Bruce. Michael Augustine Commission. Tamara Michelle Rosner. Jordana Aaron Waxman. Yicheng Liang. Leanne Rochelle Lobo. Linda Beckett Loxo Amesbury. Marissa Katrina Constant.
Jody Lynn Gallant. Faith Antoinette Grant. Ahmed Mohammed Nejim. Krista Nicole Orschall. Milani Pramit Shah. Chan Feng. Svia Rachel Iljon. Tao Tan. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science Occupational Therapy. <laughs> Kari Siegel. Catherine Sarah Alguiri. Catherine Arkari. Brianna Belsey. Emily Sarah Benner. Sarah Ann Berry. Krista Marie Betio, Laura Brennan, Jessica Lynn Campbell, Jasdeep Chahal. Dora Chewy, Megan Elizabeth Collins, Raylene Laurel Corbin, Lisa Dorothy Joan Daly. Alexandra Dunlop. Lauren Michelle Duragon. Ashley Eikens. Danielle Elizabeth Fry. Jessica Wynn Gazowich. <laughs> Carla Emily Giddings. Carly Goodman. Jerry William Greco.
Tiffany Christine Gunlau. Allison Irwin. Faiza Judavji. Sangeeta Kalmash. Saida Khan. Christy Keita. Carmel Christina La Selva. Pamela Lamb. Jeannie Lee. Harpreet Mall. Sarah Ann Mirage. Alicia Heather McGarvey. Kathleen McGee. Amanda McKinnon. Kiara Roseanne Meneguzzi. Nicholas Morrison. Sarah Margaret Newman. Viviki Putel. Ashley Ann Peach. Jan Rempel. Danica Sherman. Karen Preet Sidhu. Samantha Sinka. Jennifer Lisa Summers. Chantel Ticino. Kelly Lees Talmut. Nicole Lynn Walter. Danielle Walters. Caitlin Marie Way. Katrine Wenz. Amanda Suzanne Wong.
Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Master of Science Physiotherapy. <laughs> Nafisa Amlani. <laughs> Rebecca May Armstrong. Samantha Lee Austin. Danielle Caterini. Matthew Chin Yi. Christian DeMilville. Kyle Gerard Dertinger. Carly and Marie Dohring. Andrew Richard Dupris. Scott Michael Durno. Lauren Marie Edwards. Stephanie Alana Fernandez. Jenna Franklin. Alexander Gerba. Andrew Howie. Christian Carolyn Huey. Laura Glenn Kennedy. Sarah Colbook. Emily Ann LeBlanc. Carrie Lynn LeBlanc. Sean Alexander Lenhart. Jordan Ashley McConka. Oliver James Roth McKay. Allison McKnight. Patrick Milne. Alana Morrison. January Paige Mulbauer. Emily Newton. Jacqueline Nixon. Christina Elizabeth Novak. Brian McDade Otterkirk. Catherine N. Packenham. Julie Christina Kalinda Paul. Wow. 
Michael Davidson Heath Penny. Laura Marie Peters. Nicole Ann Petites. Amanda Victoria Politano. Lauren Elizabeth Powell. Erica Janine Reynolds. Rebecca Rosner. Gemma Ross. Andra Sconfield. Jeffrey Sleeman. Emily Lynn Stacy. Allison Stacy. Jeffrey Strong. Christine Thomas. Kristen Marie Thompson. Cora Jean Alice Rose Tomovich. Kaylee Jennifer Veerman. Lauren Sky Wallace. Danny Kenneth Yee. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Doctor of Medicine. Nicholas Matthew Bourbonetz. Madam Chancellor, May I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Honours. Christina Abu Nazar. <laughs> Saeed Zishan Udin Ahmed. Ahmed Atik. Pooja Bagri. Aaron Stanley Burke. Anna Burillo. Jordan James Craval. Farah Dawood. Yeah! William Denk. Yeah! Meng Fang. Mark Gishuru.
Spencer Graham. Viola Katza. Suji Kang. Thomas Kaschuk. Joshua Lee. Shannon Jung Yun Lee. Shannon Lee Ann Limoges. Ashley Marcinek. Priya Nanda. Candice Lee Petitjean. Anam Razia Qureshi. Puneet Kaur Rai. Joanna Alfson Reinhold. Elizabeth Jane Rusin. Caitlin Elizabeth Summer. Kathika Thirukereswaran. David Tonks. Fifia Velupilai. Jacqueline Nicole Walsh. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science Kinesiology Honours. Caitlin Goldup. Natalie Marie Collars. Christina Leonardelli. Jack Lockridge. Heather Marie McKenzie. and Sala Joseph Peter. Lauren San Martin. Luz Violita Souza. Souza. Shelley Wright. And the last one, Mei Hao Zhao. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Science. Amos Yat Yin Ao. Michael Mario Briganti. Erin Marianne Fraser.
Yunhan Gao. Haley Elizabeth Gustin. Tyler Shane Hackett. Toby Lee. Saudia S. Mohammed. Hawabibi Motala. Narifa Nasruddin. Hiba Shamshad. Manjot Singh. Landon David Statue. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Medical Radiation Sciences. Katrina Alicia Klassens. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences Honours. Erin Lee Godkin. Michael Multan. <clears throat> Madam Chancellor, May I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences. <laughs> Mustafa Alabuzi. <laughs> Kazer Amin. Anshul Arora. Simone Ban. David Carloni. Shelley Chopra. Catherine Helen Cleverly. Gemma Cramarossa. Courtney Lynn Ferdorco. Chathan Gohal. Yanbo Guo. Annika Gupta. <coughs> Camilla Rea Halgren. Benjamin Jeremy Huang. Davinda Mohan Jain. Jamil Javer.
Vinay Cancel. Sukhpreet Clare. Jane Kobolyansky. Ravi Kumar. Craig Alexander Kung. Amol Lamba. Zina Lee. Catherine Liu. Iswarya Manoharan. Shauna North. Olivia Ann Ramsey. Carol Saleh. Priscilla Santa Kumar. Kea Shah. Rebecca Shalansky. Charlie Tan. Megan Tan. Yashna Kashyap Badia. Yoni Weiss. Samuel Shengzi Zhu. Sarah Zhu. Zingnan Zhu. Wan Meng Zhu. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the degree Bachelor of Health Sciences, Physician Assistant. <laughs> Michael Christopher Dalladay. Jessica Danqua. Sahand Ensafi. Caitlin Hand. Yusira Hasnain. Stacy Lynn Henderson. Melissa Sue Holm. Justin Matthew Lautenbach. Oh. 
Kimberly McKay. Alexandra Martin. Amanda Moretti. Deepthi Naidu. <laughs> Kelly Nile. Aaron Sefton. Claire Ann Suarez. Aisha Van Der Lu. Tracy Watson. Deanne Williams. Sherry Lynn Yassen. Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the Graduate Diploma in Health Services and Policy Research. Kathy Ka K. Lee. <laughs> Madam Chancellor, may I present to you the following graduates of the Graduate Diploma in Primary Health Care Nurse Practitioner. Daniela Rossati. Ladies and gentlemen, I would now like to introduce to you Maria D'Angelo, a PhD graduate in psychology, neuroscience, and behavior, who will be delivering the valedictory address. Thank you, Dr. Wilkinson. Good afternoon, Madam Chancellor, President Dean, deans, esteemed faculty, family, friends, and of course, my fellow graduates. I'm so honored to be here today, sharing this culminating moment with all of you, a moment that we have all worked so hard to achieve. We should feel proud at the dedication that we've demonstrated in pursuing a higher education, something that sadly few individuals have the opportunity to do. In completing our degrees, we've all had to set goals, and we've all worked very hard to achieve those goals. And my hope is that we don't let that dedication and determination end here and that we transfer this approach to all aspects of our lives. As I stand here today, I can still remember one of the first moments I experienced at McMaster. It was a few months before beginning my undergrad degree, which I also completed here. I was at an information session for incoming science students that was led by Dr. Dick Day, who at the time was the Associate Dean of Science. At one point during this information session, Dr. Day asked us all what our career goals were and why we were choosing to study science at McMaster. And as you can imagine, in a room full of incoming science students, the majority of us said we wanted to be doctors. And what Dr. Day told us, and that has really stuck with me, is that although some of us in the room would go on to pursue and achieve that particular goal, others of us would become interested in different domains as we completed our courses for our undergraduate degree. And what he stressed was that we should be receptive to that possibility and allow ourselves to be guided by whatever it was that we ended up being passionate about. Dr. Day's message really did stick with me, and coincidentally, it was his own introduction to psychology class that piqued my own interest in psychology and led me down a different path than what I had envisioned when I started my undergrad degree. Like many of you here, the path that has gotten to me to this point is also not the same path that I had envisioned when starting my PhD. 
I must admit that over the course of my doctoral studies, I had many moments of doubt where I wondered if I had made the right decisions and if I had chosen correctly. It's funny how a failed experiment or five will lead to such deep reflections. But as I would reflect on all the crossroads I had encountered, and I would also think of all the life-changing experiences that I had experienced along the way. And what struck me as I would think of these moments is that I hadn't even begun to imagine the possibility of many of them when I had set my goals at the beginning of my degree. For example, five years ago, I don't think I ever imagined the possibility of going to work and live in Spain, and yet that experience is a defining moment of my life. And so, as I reflected on my own nonlinear path to this point, I realized that while it is incredibly important to set goals and work hard to achieve those goals, I think it is equally important to be open to unexpected opportunities. As we all know, we can't see into the future, and so if we set, stick by our initial plans too rigidly or too blindly, we risk missing out on these spontaneous and potentially life-defining opportunities that may pop up. And so, I think what we should all take away from this is that it's okay to change and deviate from our initial plans. There's more than one way to reach a particular goal, and sometimes it's okay if our goals change as we change with time. And this ability to show flexibility and adapt in response to changes in our goals and in light of unexpected opportunities can only serve us well in this changing world where, amongst the uncertainty of the economy and the job market, we hold the potential to do great things some of which we have yet to even imagine. And so as we celebrate this tremendous accomplishment, I'd like to leave you with a few inspiring words from Golda Meir. Trust yourself. Create the kind of self that you will be happy to live with all your life. Make the most of yourself by fanning the tiny inner sparks of possibility into flames of achievement. Thank you. Thank you very much, Maria. I think you really well captured the, the sense of transition there is uh, as the graduates, the graduates um, leave here today with your degrees, heading off into an uncertain future. I'd now like to call upon Dr. Catherine Hayward, Associate Dean of the School of Graduate Studies, Faculty of Health Sciences, who will present the Governor General's Academic Medal. Lindsay Matthews is this year's recipient of the Governor General's Academic Medal. This medal is awarded annually to the graduate student with the highest academic standing during this academic year. I ask that you and all of those present join me to express our recognition of her achievement. May I now call upon Sandra Stevenson, the Vice President of the Alumni Association, who will present the Distinguished Alumni Award for Science and give the alumni address. The recipient of the McMaster University Distinguished Alumni Award is Dr. Roger Mitchell. Dr. Mitchell is a graduate of University of Manchester in the United Kingdom. He came to Canada in 1966 to begin his doctoral work on the isotopic composition of strontium. He earned his PhD from McMaster in 1969. After two postdoctoral fellowships, one at the University of Alberta, the other at the University of Oslo, Dr. Mitchell was appointed assistant professor at Lakehead University where he remains today as Professor Emeritus and one of the university's most decorated researchers. He was the first recipient of the Lakehead University Distinguished Researcher Award and is a Fellow of the Royal Society of Canada and the Meteorological Society of America and one of the first honorary fellows of the Geological Society of India. 
He received the past president's medal, now known as the Peacock Medal of the Mineralogical Association of Canada, and earned our country's highest award for geoscience, the Willett G. Miller Medal of the Royal Society of Canada. These awards recognize Dr. Mitchell's, Mitchell's position as the world's leading authority on the occurrence and genesis of alkaline rocks, and more broadly, his research in the areas of igneous petrology and solid state chemistry. In particular, he has developed the application of modern analytical, analytical methods to mineralogy and utilized innovative solid state ceramic and hydrothermal techniques for the synthesis of inorganic compounds. He has worked extensively on the mineralogy, petrology, and geochemistry of diamond-bearing rocks, such as kimberlites and lamproites, establishing a standard genetic model and publishing definitive studies on their genesis. The results of his research in that field are now in common use in diamond exploration contributing to the rise of that industry in Canada, China, Russia, and Africa. Dr. Mitchell's monograph of the crystal structures of perovskite group compounds is considered the definitive work in, on the subject. And forgive me, Dr. Mitchell, but I'm a lawyer, so <laughs> this is all new to me. His research on perovskites is extensively utilized by the solid state chemistry and ferroelectric communities. To recognize his mineralogical studies, a mineral, Roger Mitchellite, has been named in his honor. Yeah. Good news. Dr. Mitchell's work has helped build the analytical and experimental facilities of his home university, with the addition of, among other facilities, a radiochemistry lab, a gamma ray spectrometer, an X ray diffractometer, and a scanning electron microscope with an X ray energy dispersive analytical system. His contributions to his profession include serving as president of the Mineralogical Association of Canada principal editor of the Mineralogical Magazine, and associate editor of Lethos. He is chairman of the International Kimberlite Conferences Advisory Committee. He is also a founder and president of Almas Press, a company devoted to the publication of scientific monographs. Dr. Mitchell acts as a consultant to international companies exploring for diamonds, Niobi niobium and rare earth elements. McMaster is proud to recognize Dr. Roger Mitchell of the class of 69 with the 2013 Distinguished Alumni Award. Chancellor Labarge, President Dean, McMaster Mohawk and Conestoga faculty, fellow alumni, honored guests, and members of the McMaster class of 2013. I am a graduate of the class of 1978, and it's my pleasure to serve as the vice president of the McMaster Alumni Association. There is an unwritten contract that says that everyone who speaks at convocation must offer advice to the graduating class. So in preparing my comments, I tried to recall what advice had been imparted to me on the day of my graduation from Mac 35 years ago. It was the 70s, so really my only recollections are of bad and big hair and platform shoes. But thankfully, other Mac grads have chimed in with advice. Not long ago, your McMaster Alumni Association asked over 160,000 alumni around the world to send in adv advice for new grads like you. We called it the Good Advice Project, and here to today is a selection of our favorites. Think before you act. Keep your eyes open. Know when to keep your mouth shut. Cross at the lights. 
Honesty promotes happiness. Make sure you travel. And perhaps strangest of all, beware of snowflakes. All actual advice from Honest to Goodness McMaster alumni. The Alumni Association will continue inviting advice from our members, including you, and we'll be asking new grads to provide wisdom to incoming MAC students. We think this kind of support from one generation of the McMaster family to the next is important because every McMaster class, regardless of era, shares at least two things with all others. The first is the great potential you have as new graduates of one of the world's truly great universities. The second is that we all share a familial connection with McMaster and to each other and a responsibility to the, build on the legacy we have inherited. The McMaster Alumni Association is here to help you to maintain that connection. You have in your hands the convocation booklet that describes our programs. You can be part of MAC 10, a program for grads of the last decade. Watch for the alumni magazine, the McMaster Times, in your mailbox, Maroon Mail in your inbox, and be part of the association's online community. Follow the association on Twitter, Facebook, YouTube, LinkedIn, Flickr, and whatever else is coming down the pike. Access our value-added services like home, auto, and life insurance. And join your fellow alumni at one of the hundreds of events that we hold annually, both in Hamilton, across Canada, and around the world. There is a place for all of you in the McMaster Alumni Association. And there are many ways to stay connected, whether as a casual user of our social media, up to being a highly engaged alumna, volunteer, and donor like our chancellor, a proud member of the class of 67, and the recipient of an honorary doctor of letters bestowed upon her by McMaster in 2011. And so, to the class of 2013, we celebrate your success whether you've completed your undergrad or if after today people call you doctor, we toast your accomplishment and look forward to your continued success wherever you're heading. Your fellow MAC grads are proud to welcome you to the McMaster alumni family. Congratulations. May I invite Dr. Dean back to the podium to present the President's Award for Excellence in Student Leadership and to give his address. The 2013 recipient of the President's Award for Excellence in Student Leadership, Christina Lenardelli. For five years, Christina Lenardelli represented McMaster University on the soccer pitch as a member of the varsity soccer team, serving as the team's captain from 2010 to 2012. She is a multiple time OUA, that is to say Ontario University Athletics first team all-star, Marauder Scholar, and CIS, Canadian Inter-University Sport Academic All-Canadian. Sport has been the platform for a significant amount of Christina's volunteer work, as she has been an executive member of the McMaster Athletes Care, serving as MAC, MAC, MAC's Director of Small Organizations. And in that capacity, she helped McMaster student athletes find rewarding volunteer experiences in the local community, with organizations like the Boys and Girls Club, City Kids, and the McMaster Children's Hospital. Christina, who has worked with McMaster Student Success Center as a volunteer coordinator and events assistant guiding the McMaster Ambassador Program and the Orientation Leader Program, has also twice been a team leader for the McMaster Relay for Life. She was a team host for the 2012 CIS Women's Volleyball Championship Tournament, and that same year, she organized a 200-person gala event 
which raised $13,000 for the ride to conquer cancer. Christina has also been active as a service learning participant in the MacServe program. She devoted her 2012 Reading Week to a number of Hamilton-based organizations working on poverty-related issues, and in 2010, she undertook a two-week service learning trip to Costa Rica. In great admiration, congratulations, Christina. Thank you. Very well done. It's now my privilege to say a few words as our celebration draws to a close. We will soon emerge from Nobel Prize season. In the autumn of every year since 1901, the Swedish Academy, the Norwegian Nobel Committee, and the Nobel Assembly of the Karolinska Institute have handed out prizes in recognition of major scientific and cultural achievement. If my calculations are correct, since that first year, 847 individuals and 22 organizations have received Nobel Prizes or the Prize in Economic Sciences. Three of these winners have had an association with McMaster University. One was an alumnus, one was a professor here, and one was an alumnus who at the time the prize was awarded to his organization, Doctors Without Borders was its president. And this year, as you know, the Nobel Prize for Literature has come to Canada to writer Alice Munro. This well-deserved honor has occasioned much celebrating across our country. I've more than once pondered the question, what do you do after you've won the Nobel Prize? The empirical evidence seems to suggest that you just go on doing what you were doing before. More cutting edge science, more brilliant writing, further efforts to bring peace to our planet, and so on. But I do think the question is an interesting one. After all, if to receive the Nobel Prize is to achieve a summit of sorts, where do you climb to after that? If the pursuit of awards and recognition is what drives you, you're in a bit of a pickle if you've won the Nobel Prize. In case you're wondering, it is possible to win the Nobel Prize a second time, but the number of people who've done so is very small. Now, the hypothetical question I've been pondering is relevant to all of you, of course. Today's convocation celebration is one of those rituals which, like the Nobel presentations in Stockholm and Oslo, provides public recognition of achievement, yours. And it also raises the question of what comes after, or should come after, for you and for all of us, whose future you will have the power to affect. A convocation is very different in a number of ways, obviously, not least because it recognizes a very recent achievement on your part, the satisfying of degree requirements through examinations or through the submission and satisfactory defense of a dissertation, for example. Now, in contrast, it is not uncommon for decades to intervene between a discovery in chemistry or physics, say, and the awarding of a Nobel Prize to the person who made the discovery. Take, for example, Dr. Peter Higgs who with a number of colleagues first theorized the existence of the so-called God particle, the Higgs boson, in 1964, but received the Nobel Prize for this discovery only this year. When McMaster's Dr. Bertrand Brockhaus won the 1994 Nobel Prize for Physics, he did so for a lifetime of research, yes, but particularly for work done at the Chalk River Laboratories in the 1950s over 40 years before. How might we describe the intervening period in cases like that? Those many years between the hypothesis and the award represent a kind of proving time when the value of the initial proposition emerges and is judged either through experiment 
or by the evidence of its impact on subsequent science. And I suppose that is why, for the most part, winners of the Nobel Prize are not tortured by my hypothetical question, what comes after? Because for them, after is paradoxically part of what came before, if you know what I mean. I hope I haven't lost you already. <laughs> now, if you're a bit worried about where this leads in terms of yourselves and today's convocations, uh, you've successfully caught my drift. Here's another question. What if the chancellor earlier in the ceremony had not said, I admit you to these degrees, but had instead promised to confer your degree on you in 20 years, after a proving time when the value of your years at McMaster might be more accurately judged by the impact you have made? I'm sure the question makes your blood run cold. <laughs> but it's certainly worth pondering. Just because your after has not already happened, because it is a true after, and is as yet unknown and lies before you, redolent with potential, does not mean it is irrelevant to the value of the degree you have received today. That degree is only superficially recognition for what you have achieved in the recent past, and it is anything but a terminal point. If anything, it represents an obligation you have entered into to live a life of value, to prove yourselves as scientists, nurses, doctors, business people, artists, thinkers, and above all, as human beings. If a degree were nothing more than tangible recognition of your having studied assiduously for the last three or four or more years, I wonder whether we would celebrate its conferral with all this ceremony and grandeur, whether, for example, we would think it absolutely necessary for someone to come in carrying a large silver mace to start the whole thing off. And would we want to have hundreds of people present to witness the occasion? I think not. We do all of this for the same reason that the Nobel Committee brings out Swedish and Norwegian monarchs to present its prizes. Because what is being celebrated is of value, not just to the person receiving the honor, but to society at large. The big difference between those ceremonies and this one is that the Nobel Prizes are about the before, about things already achieved, whereas our exercises today are much more about the after, about a future which I certainly do hope We'll see one or two of you cross the stage at Oslo or Stockholm, but see all of you take what you have begun here at McMaster and build upon it throughout your lives to the greater good of all people and for the health of our world. Your proving time now lies ahead of you. And this ceremony expresses the faith that the university has in you our trust that you will continue to educate yourselves, that you will expand your understanding not only of your chosen field, but of the broad spectrum of human concerns within which you will do your work. And that, above all, you will use the privilege of your education for the betterment of society, and also, if only because society will collapse because of it, the preservation of the natural world. Now, there are risks in this expression of trust. The Nobel committees now insist on a lengthy proving time for rather good reason. In 1926, they awarded the prize for physiology or medicine to the Danish scientist Johannes Fibiger for having discovered the existence of Spiroptera carcinoma, a parasite that he claimed was the cause of cancer. This was, of course, discredited by subsequent science. But such cases and the embarrassment that they cause to the institutions involved bring home to us the importance of not fetishizing past achievement, but of constant concentrating instead upon what people are doing now and what they must do in the future for the good of us all. 
When the writer Virginia Woolf, who did not receive the Nobel Prize, incidentally, exhorted us to avoid decorations and awards, avoid shiny pots given out by the headmaster is exactly what she said. She was drawing attention to just this point, that when we accept awards or overly estimate our achievements on occasions like this, we place ourselves in a peculiar kind of human jeopardy, one in which, as in the case of Johannes Fibiger, our past credit may with time be turned to discredit, or at least may under underline our subsequent failure. So to avoid being caught in that trap, it is probably best, notwithstanding the fact that you do now have your degrees firmly in your hands and I can't take them back, to regard the years ahead of you as your proving time. And if you'll allow me, at the risk of complicating matters, to return to the terms provided my, by my original question, you should not leave this hall as people entering the time after, but as people entering the time before. This is just a way of saying that you've only just begun and that graduation should not be the end, but the beginning of your highest aspirations. Your degree is just a stepping stone, which sooner or later you should expect to leave behind. In that process, you may find yourself driven by the pursuit of awards and rewards, although Virginia Woolf would certainly discourage you from doing that, especially since it may make you beholden to the person or institution conferring the award. Alternatively, you may be driven by curiosity to know and to discover more than you know today. Or you may derive energy and excitement from the drive to serve and to help others. As you sit here and ponder your future, you are at a tantalizing moment. Great things are within your grasp. You are surrounded by support, and you have just received your degree as a token of the university's trust and confidence in you. That word tantalizing. Perhaps you remember the predicament of Tantalus in Greek myth. For his sins, the details of which we won't be concerned with today, he was condemned in perpetuity to reach out for some fruit, which as he almost grasped it, would then be withdrawn or he would bend down for some water, which would immediately recede before he could wet his lips. Tantalizing. My very good friend John, a physiologist, teacher, and active researcher, not so long ago spoke to me with self-deprecating humor about coming to terms with the realization that he would probably not win the Nobel Prize. His point was not that he had ever felt entitled to the prize, or even that he believed his life's work placed him in that league, but rather that as a scientist, he had always aspired to the highest achievement and set goals for himself that would be most valuable to his field and to the pursuit of knowledge. After an excellent career and having made important contributions to our understanding of the way in which the human body works, he nevertheless had to acknowledge two things. One, that the summit of knowledge and insight towards which any honestly curious mind works will move perpetually out of reach. And two, that the real value of a career or a life is therefore unlikely to be found in some great terminal achievement or recognition like the Nobel Prize. That is the profound challenge that stands before you and which you need not face today, but which will confront you increasingly in the years to come. It is the challenge of finding value in human life without the certainty of external eventual validation. It is the challenge of living as if you are in the before while recognizing that for the most part, you live in the mere present or a perpetual after. Where shall we find value in those circumstances? That is the question I would leave you with today. Our Nobel laureate, Alice Munro, offers us some guidance 
in this predicament. The constant happiness, she writes, is curiosity. My very best wishes to you all. Thank you. Congratulations to the class of 2013. I myself am a McMaster alumna, and I'm looking forward to being back on campus as I serve my term as chancellor. Dr. Calabrese and Dr. Mitchell, congratulations on your accomplishments. As Ms. Stevenson eloquently said, you are all now graduates and members of this wonderful group of alumni. Dr. Dean, I will remember your words of wisdom. But to you graduates, I, what I took from his remarks is a challenge to you to use what you've learned here to take it further. You've been lucky today, through Dr. Calabrese and Dr. Mitchell, to see two people who have done exactly that. The challenge is yours now. What you've got here at McMaster is a wonderful foundation from which to launch yourselves. And as you do, and as you add to society in whatever way you choose, you strengthen that foundation and make it stronger and firmer for those people who come after you. And so I wish you lots of luck in doing it, and my best wishes to you all. I have just a couple of housekeeping items to tell you about before we close. Flowers that have been delivered for graduates will be available at the coat check in the main lobby. I would ask that you please remain standing at your seats until the academic procession and the graduates have left the hall. Finally, please join now in the singing of our national anthem. After the singing of the anthem, the convocation stands adjourned. Thank you.